So I got this comment on my channel on one of my videos the other week. Yeah, I think we can do that. Let's get right into it. So before we start talking about some tips and tricks, I do want to say that if we speed up our 3D prints, there is going to be some uh, counterbalancing factor in terms of quality, in terms of strength, durability, etc. So increasing the prints are not always the best way to go about things. Okay. So as I talk about each individual one of these tips, just understand there will be caveats um, at some point there. So just be very careful instead of adding all of these into your repertoire really quick, that there are going to be some trade-offs. One more thing, I'll be focusing on Orca Slicer and by extension Bamboo, Bamboo Slicer because they're pretty much the same thing. Um, if you're interested, all of these settings are in Cura as well. But if you would like a standalone Cura video, let me know down in the comments below if you'd be interested in that and I'd be happy to make it happen. All right, let's hop into some tips. All right, so now that we're actually in uh, the slicer here, one of the things that I loaded my, my model, the first product I actually posted uh, on my Etsy store, um, and you can see kind of what we're looking at here, the, the sh um, bins here, the actual drawers would be printed separately, but this model itself is going to be about 13 and a half hours. Um, so here's my first tip in order to adjust that. First off, change the amount of infill that you have. So for instance, if I would change the infill density to 10% um, and then try and re-slice my plate, I should be able to cut out just a little bit of that time there. So you'd save uh, over an hour just by decreasing the infill density 5%. Now, again, trade off with that is you're gonna have issues then with the strength and durability of your part. The lower the infill, the less um, durable your piece is going to be long-term for sure. Along the same line is you can actually change the infill pattern itself. So one of the best things that you can do is if you change your infill pattern to lightning, it's only gonna add support where it thinks it needs it, right? So I'm gonna change that to lightning, see what that comes up with, see if I see any time, save any time there. See, I saved almost, was that like two hours or so? Um, over two hours that I saved just by switching to lightning and then by switching my sparse infill pattern or density, excuse me, um, down simply 5%, right? So another 5%, again, we can kind of see that if I slice my plate, so I was at nine hours and something there. Um, so now I kind of the same thing there. So you don't with diminishing returns at some point, but again, the lower that is, um, the less durable your part's gonna be, but again, save you time. So really good if you're um, just kind of rough troubleshooting a piece um, or just kind of testing something for the first time is you don't really need much infill if you know it's not gonna be the final iteration. So next is a pretty simple one, um, is just changing the layer height that you are printing in. So I like to stick with 0.16. I think it's a nice kind of gap between um, the higher uh, volume versus the lower volume. It still gets pretty good quality. In my opinion, I'm own preset that as well that I think works really well with my prints. Um, but just changing this to 0 0.2, 0 0.24, or even increasing the nozzle size on your printer itself. I know a lot of people, you see a lot of YouTubers do like 0 0.6 millimeter um, nozzle size. Um, I run a 0 0.4, it just seems to be what's best for me. But again, 0 0.6, if you're not worried about super detailed prints, uh, a 0 0.6 could really help to increase um, the flow of your piece. So for example, again, kind of the same thing. If I slice this one more time, I reset all of my original settings. So I think this was what, about 13, again, and a half hours again. But if I would do something like maybe just a 0 0.2 standard, if I would slice that print again, so it goes from about 13 and a half hours down to seven, right? So, I mean, for all intents and purposes, cut the time in half. So you could see if we went 0.6 or even 0.24, which is just for really rough drafts, um, that should really, you know, cut the time down another half hour or so. So again, you get to the point where there's diminishing returns, um, but even still like that really, really cuts your time down pretty heavily. Hey everybody, if you're finding these tips and tricks useful, um, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel, gave a like to the video or leave a comment down below. It really helps uh, with the algorithm, really helps to grow my channel. So again, just thank you for all the support. And if you enjoyed the, if you're enjoying the content right now, um, love it if you stuck around for a little longer. So thank you so much and I really appreciate it. Let's get back to some tips. Next, and I hesitate to bring this up, is increasing the actual speed of your printer. I struggle to recommend this one simply because I I really struggle with, with increasing the speed of my printer because I'm not super concerned with extreme production right now. Maybe when my print farm takes off, you're just hoping, um, then I will be, but you can always increase the speed of your uh, pieces. Now again, if you increase the speed, it pushes your uh, machine um, a little bit so you might get some stringing you might get not as fine detailed prints if you increase the speed But again your time will decrease. So for example this initial piece again resetting all the time 13 hours 
37 minutes, okay? Now, if I would increase any of these, even just 50 millimeters a second, now these are supposed to go 500 millimeters a second, I think 300 is a pretty solid um, point that we can lay at. So even just like my inner wall, let me increase that to 200, and maybe my outer wall, I just increase to 100. So instead of 13 hours, 37 minutes, um, let's see what we kind of uh, end up with. Again, probably sacrificing quality, uh, probably sacrificing some outer surface, um, how, how nice it looks on the outside. Um, but again, saving that time. Actually, we didn't save hardly any time there by increasing um, the speed on the outside, okay? Now, let's see what we can do if we up that to maybe 250 or something like that, seeing if we can get uh, potentially a little bit more speed running through um, this piece. So there we go, I mean, saved like 20 minutes or so, which again, not a huge deal, um, but, or not, not a lot of time, but something that is, you know, maybe worth it to you and your system. But again, you can mess with all of these um, kind of initial pieces, even my first like layer height. Maybe I do something like that that saves me a couple minutes too. So it just depends on, on your system. But that could uh, be another way where we uh, really increase our time. Again, it's kind of staying the same, but just messing with these could, could save you some time in the long run for sure. Last thing I wanna talk about here is the actual design of your models themselves. So if you are, um, if you design your models, one thing you may want to consider is trying to design those models uh, without supports. Um, so if you look up the YouTube channel uh, Off The Bench, I love that YouTube channel, it's so fun to watch his videos. Um, he designs all of his stuff without supports so that you save a lot of time with this. So the supports themselves, right? So you can see how, how this design has to just because there's no way that it makes this entire uh, gap without sagging pretty bad. Um, but if I were to turn my supports off, and try and slice this again. Again, you go from that 13 hours, 37 minutes, you save like three and a half hours, uh, three hours and 15 minutes just with supports themselves. So imagine if you create a design that doesn't require supports, um, then you could save a ton of time in that area as well. Um, and then with your supports, I'm not gonna go into the whole uh, piece there, but you could certainly mess with the angle of it so that there's not as many supports added. Um, and then you can mess with like the size of your, your tree limbs uh, like your support limbs, uh, all of that kind of stuff. So that could be another uh, really helpful way to, again, save some time. Now you probably lose a little bit of time of that in the modeling phase, just trying to figure out how to do that without supports. Um, but then I think that makes up for, especially if you have a, a print farm and this is something you're running continuously, um, is you put in the time up front, but then every time you run that print, you're saving all of that time support, you're saving material, then you're saving money. Final tip I have is if you have a multicolored system like your AMS Lite or your AMS um, or the MMU3 for uh, Prusa, you know, you have all of these um, different pieces that will drastically increase your time. So if you can find a model um, that doesn't utilize it or utilizes it sparingly, meaning that it's not going to switch every layer, you're going to save yourself a ton of, ton of time that way as well. Or even if you do have to do that, right, just make sure it's not as many layers, you're going to save yourself a ton of time that way. And again, you're not going to waste near as much material. So another just quick way um, that you can prevent um, some of that time loss or time addition, excuse me. So that's gonna be the video. Again, one thing that I do wanna stress to you is that if you are doing these things, you are gonna have trade-offs in some area of your print, right? You increase the speed, you're gonna lose how nice the outside of your piece looks. If you decrease, or if you lose supports, you may have some overhang issues. Uh, if you decrease your strength, your piece is not gonna be as durable. So all of these come with trade-offs. So you just have to fine tune your system, your parts, your printer in order to make sure that it's running um, to an area you think is effective while still producing quality parts uh, for whatever your purpose is. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you have any additional tips and tricks for everybody, I'd love if you drop them down uh, in the comment section below. Any questions, I'm happy to answer there as well. Um, but just please let me know what your thoughts were. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you enjoyed this content, love it if you liked and subscribed as well. Uh, have a goal of continuing to grow the channel here in the next couple months. Uh, I'm having a ton of fun with it, so I'm just gonna keep riding it uh, and see what happens. So thank you so much for all the support. Again, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.